What's up, guys? Back. Jake's giving me another opportunity to to have a crushing intro here, but uh, glad to, glad everybody's here. We've got my boy George Mikhail from Bitcoin What's Magazine. That? He is a very very uh, special guy that I'm I'm excited to have on here, and his son Kingston. So uh, welcome, oh. guys, and looking forward to having a good chat with you. Uh, George before, is somebody I've Kingston, known the, for the youngest people. The youngest people that we oh, ever yeah. had was the Giga guys. <laughs> is what? <laughs> the Giga guys. They're they're like three it's years older. It's a long standing joke. Right, right. Right. Three years older. I'm 16. That's impressive. I, I know. They're, they, hey, you're behind them. You better pick it up, man. They're like three years older than you. They got already got a freaking billion dollar company almost. So. Hey, I they're still got really, time. I still got time. You got time. You got time. And uh, they're not actually, they're a little bit more than three years older than you, but you're on a pretty good track, Kinks, and I can't wait to talk about it. So, um, but just for a little bit of background, George is a good friend of mine. I, uh, I've gotten to know him a lot more over the last couple of years. And uh, George, I think you're a kind of voice that more people in the Bitcoin space need to know. Not that they don't know you, but um, I think we need to hear from guys like you uh, more. And I think you just got, you're a really pleasant person to be around. You got a great outlook on things and you've, you've done some things in a variety of different areas that I think are really important and valuable. And I'm just really happy to get you on here, man. This is, these are the kind of shows I want to have more uh, in the future. And so I'm fired up about it, dude. Yeah, man. Well, excited to make this happen. Thanks so much for having me on. Of course, man. Um, so why don't you, you told us a little bit about your background before we started, but so why don't you just regurgitate some of that and just kind of let everybody know like your background, because I, I, I do like it and it's different. It's actually, I had a lot of different jobs in my background and I'm kind of, I call myself sometimes like the Forrest Gump of Bitcoin, but it's not because I'm <laughs> slow. <laughs> so... <laughs> but sure. you've had yeah. a lot of different areas that you've touched too. So yeah, go ahead. Tell us your, your background. Yeah, man. Always tough to know where to start, but like, I guess just from the very beginning. So I was born in Cairo, Egypt, um, <laughs> and uh, immigrated when I was four years old and uh, grew up in the Seattle area. Started my uh, career, we'll kind of fast forward, when I was 19 years old, I got in the real estate business and... Um, uh, primarily the mortgage industry. So this is kind of around the time of the great financial crisis. I uh, worked for Wells Fargo Home Mortgage, kind of climbed the corporate ladder there for a little while, made a ton of money and was doing really well. Uh, but quickly kind of got disillusioned by everything that I was seeing. Uh, you know, if you, if you recall at the time, these were these were like the loans that people just, you know, basically you fog a mirror, you get a loan is, is the deal. And um, that made me uncomfortable a little bit, uh, especially kind of seeing how people were out of work and, the government was like bailing out banks. And so that, that was all kind of jarring. Uh, and at the same time for me though, my, like my career was going well. And so this is this weird kind of juxtaposition that uh, didn't sit right with me. And at the time I was having a little bit of like a spiritual awakening. Uh, I was, I was attending this church that was, that was growing really rapidly um, in the Seattle area called East Lake. And I remember the pastor there had always, he was always trying to get me to come work for him. And I was always like, dude, you can't afford me. Like, I don't know what we're even talking about here. <laughs> I'm not going to come work for a church, <laughs> but um, uh, he kind of wore on me for a while. And there was kind of an, enough, uh, enough there with my disillusionment to, to finally jump ship, took this massive pay cut and ended up uh, working for, for this church. And again, climbed, climbed the ranks, became kind of his, his right hand man and uh, the executive pastor of that church. And, and this is a, this is a large evangelical multi-site mega church. We're, we're at nine locations in the Seattle area. It's like 8,000 people on a, on a weekend. So high production. Um, kind of where I found uh, my love for events and just kind of putting on putting on shows. Um, and so to, to kind of wrap that story up, kind of got a, a peek behind the scenes into how like the economics of church worked and uh, just kind of kept tucking away these lessons, right? The great financial crisis, um, pastors really incentivized to lie to people essentially to, mm. to get them to tell them what they want to hear so that they keep coming back, they keep donating. It's really how the system is designed. Didn't like that very much. Kind of got disillusioned with that, um, and so so these economic lessons I think really uh, primed me for being ready to to get exposed to, to Bitcoin later in my journey, um, which was around 20, 2017. 
um, started working for uh, Russell Okung, former former NFL player, former Seahawk, Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champ. Uh, he's also my brother-in-law. And uh, so I was doing some work with him. Uh, he was really into to venture capital at the time. And so one of my responsibilities was was looking at the, the deals that uh, he was he was being you know sent and kind of filtering them saying, hey, Russ, you should look at this one, you know, don't invest in this one. And at the time, uh, there was a, a theme of, of blockchain, crypto, Bitcoin type deals that, that uh, were heavy in volume. And we started paying attention to those. And, um, you know, when I, when I started looking more into Bitcoin, I, I was like, oh, man, this could actually be a solution to a lot of these these problems that I've encountered throughout my journey. And so uh, it was pretty intuitive. And, and, you know, Russ and I kind of fell, fell down the Bitcoin rabbit hole together um, in 2017, bought my first Bitcoin at the you know Pico top in December, 17K, I think it was. Wrote it all the way down to whatever three or four k, um, but knew there knew that there was something something there, um, and had my like you know Ethereum, uh, Litecoin phase. Litecoin is oh, yeah. silver. I don't know if you remember this narrative. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. Got to get some Litecoin. Got to diversify. Um, and you know got wrecked like everyone. Um, and then 2019 went went full kind of Bitcoin only. Uh, Russ and I hosted an event in LA called Bitcoin Is, um, and that was like our first. Uh, I guess introduction to to the Bitcoin scene, and and it's where we met a lot of uh, people who are still friends now. We, and because it was Russ, like we were able to get whoever we wanted to, to come to that event. You know, mm-hmm. Safety, and, uh, Alex Gladstein, Pomp, like uh, everyone everyone came through. So that was that was a lot of fun. And um, and then yeah, found uh, found this role at uh, BTC Inc uh, as a director of marketing. It's kind of how I got my foot in the door. Um, this was about three years ago. Um, and, you know, kind of, uh, worked my way through, uh, different, different roles and responsibilities and today find myself, uh, leading our media organization. So I'm, I'm the general manager at Bitcoin magazine, uh, as of about three weeks ago. So brand new position prior to that, I was the vice president of operations. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for this, this next era of, of, uh, the media org and, and kind of what it means. And, um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, well, so congratulations, man. Yeah, yeah no, congratulations yeah, on the, the promotion. Thank you. What yeah. all falls into the, the media purview? Uh, so Bitcoin Magazine encompasses uh, our website, obviously, BitcoinMagazine.com, our Twitter, which is probably our largest channel, 3.3 3. million uh, followers. Uh, we have a print magazine uh, that, that comes out you know, once a quarter. Um, but then, you know, within the BTC Inc. umbrella, we have our, our sister companies, the Bitcoin Conference, as well as uh, UTXO. So we all kind of work in, in tandem with each other. Um, but yeah, so our responsibilities on the media side, really, are, our partners are anyone who is in the, in the space that wants to advertise to our audience. Um, we, we also have like periodic events that are pretty unique. So like for the having, we hosted a, a live stream that uh, followed you know, I think we counted down to the, the 21 blocks leading up to the to the having, which is really cool. Um, and then, ooh, I should share this. This is this is exclusive. No one knows this one yet, but we are hosting a live stream on election day. Also, um, that's going to be catered to the the Bitcoin audience, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, broadcasting live from Vegas. Uh, so, trying to give uh, Bitcoiners an alternative to kind of watch the the election day uh, outside mm-hmm. of cable news and follow follow the races that are that are important to to Bitcoiners. Um, so really excited for that. It's going to be announced tomorrow. So probably by the time this airs, people will know. But you guys, you guys know. Nice. First. We got, the, we're, we broke, awesome. we're breaking news over here, <laughs> energizing Bitcoin. Dude, that's awesome. That that sounds great though. I like that. We need a, like a whole news channel that's like Bitcoin news channel. Yes, uh, dude. That, I would, that, we should we should actually t- talk about that. I've been thinking a lot about that. Like how do we get just like real time, like a cable news where you can always tune in. It'd be hard to do like round, round yeah. the clock coverage, but I think, we could pull it off. There's enough right. content out there. You could fill it with other content. You know what I mean? You could fill it with other content, really? documentaries, you could that fill kind it of with stuff. Ridiculousness, it, like MTV does, just around the clock. Just right, re- right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Sure. I think I think this is a great idea. And I think we need to do this together as a group right here. Kingston, you can be the executive producer, you and Sarah. And we, we just start building. Yeah. I like it. Hey. Guys, I like it. I'm, I'm the boss now. I can, we can do this. I can green light this. Let's go. I love it. I love it. I love having powerful friends. That's right. Let's go. <laughs> you left out some things in your kind of accomplishments in your little bio you just gave us, oh man, and that is you're an author. Um, 
co-author of uh, Thank God for Bitcoin, which I, I would like to talk a little bit about it too, just to, you know, for those who haven't read it, I've read most of that one as well. Um, I, I think that's a great book too. Um, but also your most recent one, which just came out this summer and was originally what we were wanting to do. We wanted to have the George on for the, 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 his first stop for his book tour that he did, but unfortunately we got it bumped. Um, but he just wrote another book called, um, I'm not your bra. And I love it. We, Sarah and I, uh, we started reading it. Got to finish this though, but yeah, just kind of tell us about the books and, uh, you know, what each one has a pretty unique, um, thing that it covers, I think. And it correlates and ties back to Bitcoin for both of them, obviously. Uh, but yep. yeah, just kind of give us a synopsis on those. Sure. So uh, thank God for Bitcoin. So that actually, so out of uh, Bitcoin is the event I mentioned, uh, Jimmy Song was one of the speakers. I got to know him um, a little bit, kind of uh, connected on the fact that we were both both Christian, uh, uh, but like saw the world very differently. Um, but there was enough common ground there where we agreed on Bitcoin and we're like, there's kind of this overlap between like the Christian community and the Bitcoin community. And there's probably a book here. And so um, we, we linked up, started a, a book club with, with a bunch of other people. And um, we started reading some, some like uh, economics books. Uh, and <laughs> uh, at the end of it, we got a group of us together. There, I think there was eight or nine of us. Um, and we decided to write this, this book, Thank God for Bitcoin. Uh, Robert Breedlove uh, also is a co-author, Lyle Pratt, a few others. Um, and really, it's, it's a great book for Bitcoiners to share with people who have any sort of faith background. Um, it kind of approaches the question of Bitcoin from like a, the moral imperative side of it, like why Bitcoin is is good for people, good for for humanity. Um, really easy read, quick read, um, and and again would resonate with anyone who has like any sort of church or spiritual background. Can you expand on that and just give us uh, like the moral case or the Christian case for it? Yeah. So. Uh, Thank God for Bitcoin, the creation, cr uh, redemption of money. Wait, the creation, corruption, and redemption of money. Sorry, it's been a while since I looked at this one. Um, <laughs> the redemption, so it look, looks at the entire arc of like what money is. So actually, we don't even talk about Bitcoin until I think the mm -hmm. last like couple chapters. So it's really an exploration of, of what money is and, and how, it's, how it got corrupted and the, you know, the, the temptations of fiat and all these things that, you know, I've kind of talked about in my intro of like, pastors mm -hmm. incentives and uh banks incentives and governments and how money gets corrupted and and then we kind of wrap it up with how bitcoin sort of redeems uh money and the potential that it has to to offer hope for the world um mm -hmm. so you know there's there's theories out there that maybe satoshi is the second coming um <laughs> there's there's a lot of uh i think really rich um there's a, a rich component to why bitcoin is actually a very positive force uh, for good in the world. And so we kind of explore those themes. It's not like, a, a, like I, um, I don't wanna say this, it's not like overtly like Christian, like we, we sprinkle right. some Bible verses in there that, um, you know, sometimes like mm -hmm. out, of, out of context or not, not super relevant, which we've got a lot of feedback about that. We know yeah. we're aware, please don't, <laughs> you know, you don't need to email me about that, it's all good. Um, they're Bible verses that can be helpful. And, um, but yeah, I think for me, like as someone who is now sort of, again, kind of disillusioned with the church and, and that whole thing. Mm -hmm. I still find it to be helpful. I, I still think like there is a, right. a spiritual component to what's happening in this fight of sort of good versus evil in the world. And, and I think Bitcoin's a big part of that. One thing I'm going to say too, sorry, Jake knows I'm wanting to get all, I want to make things very philosophical and spiritual and all this stuff. But uh, one thing I've always, because uh, I feel the same way um, about the church oftentimes. Um but I also, one of the best quotes I ever heard was from uh, a Christmas, is it a Christmas carol? The one by Charles Dickens. And when the ghost of Christmas present is like, Scrooge is like, hey man, you got to shut down churches and you, you, you won't feed the poor on Sundays and all that. Like how hypocritical is that? And the ghost gets all mad and he's like, don't put on me what man does. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I, that mm. sticks with me so much because it's so true. A lot of the things that happen that are uh, under the guise of the church or like Christianity or spirituality or, or religion, um, a lot yeah. of those get cast upon God. And it's like, nah, man, this yeah. 
Just because somebody does something in God's name doesn't mean it's God's work. And, 100%. you know, it's so sorry. Oh, I just totally wanted to throw that that's in good. there. I love it. No, I agree. But, uh, I think that's where I'm at, too. Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. like it's it's uh, you know the church has its own baggage. All these, even all these, the words, the way that we use all, all these words have, have baggage. The word God carries. Dude, a lot of- I was having this conversation today. Go, oh, sorry, George. Go <laughs> ahead, but yeah, no, like it's, it's it's you know what do you mean by God? Like who who, who are you talking to? What are you ta- who, who are you talking about? And um, you know, I, I try to simplify it as much as I can, and just like. It, it doesn't have to be wrapped in this sort of like church Christian do these things. Um, it, it's, it's more just like, um, what is the fruit? What is the fruit of your life? You know, and mm-hmm. if, are you somebody who I want to be like, <laughs> I don't care what right. you say about what you believe or, you know, uh, it really does come down to like, who are you as a person? Who are you becoming? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's kind of what I, I want to model my life after. You'll know them by their fruits. That's, that's the way yep. it is. Amen. So, Preach. Um, all right, my um, bad. Now tell us about the new one. Um, because it's a parenting book yes. and it's, it, and that's why we got Kingston on here. Cause for a Bitcoin kind of phrase, obviously proof of work. So this, that's right. George's book, Kingston, you're the proof that this stuff works and that he's not been lying the whole time in that book. So let's, yeah, let's hear I about it. Every story in it. <laughs> it's you all did. true. You, you it all passes muster. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I am not your bra. 21 keys to sound parenting. Uh, my, my first solo book, very excited about it just came out. Um, I have not done a great job of promoting it. It's actually, it's one thing to write a book. It's another thing to like talk about it and tell people like, Hey, you should do this book. <laughs> but I do love this book. Um, gotten really good feedback. Anyone who's actually read it, uh, I feel like has enjoyed it. So that's encouraging. Uh, but basically this came, came out because, um, so I brought Kingston to a conference, Bitcoin 2021. No, uh, two is the first one I met. 2022. And uh, so I was working at the, the conference at the time and uh, Kingston was with me and he was what, thir- 13? King? Yeah. 13 years old. And uh, the way that he like kind of sprung into action and just like made himself useful and uh, people coming up to me the, the entire time, like, yo, what have, what have you been teaching this kid? Um, and, and literally like people were coming up to me saying, you need to, you need to write this down. You need to write a book. Uh, because I want to know all of your parenting strategies. And so I love writing. And I'm like, mm, it's a good idea for a book. I could, I could do this. I uh, also noticed a lot of Bitcoiners starting to have kids uh, as we become older. And so I uh, try to figure out kind of how to weave in the Bitcoin themes that you know, my wife and I have, have uh, implied in, in our parenting strategy. And so, um, yeah, this book kind of came together over the span of uh, six months or so, uh, just kind of writing down all of the, all of the secrets, <laughs> all the tips and tricks <laughs> that, that we've used that have worked. Uh, so there's 21 chapters that cover, um, you know, anything from, from discipline to how to, you know, talk, actually talk to your kids and have a relationship with your kids. Um, I think that the main theme and the kind of the title of the book, I'm not your bra, just touches on how like you're, you're not your kid's friend, right? Like there, there is a mm-hmm. difference between, being a, an authority figure and, and being a parent and being intentional with that relationship with, with your kids uh, versus kind of what's become common, which is like people, ki- kids literally calling their mom like, bruh, like, bruh, like it just is so like cringeworthy a lot of times. And so um, <laughs> that's where the, the title came from is, is just trying to put an end to that whole like narrative. So if you get nothing else, just get the title. Like you're, I'm not your bruh. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe start there with your parenting. And uh, you know, if that's helpful, then yeah, maybe pick up the book and read the rest of it. So I'm going to already just kind of out myself. I um I already was kind of on my heels when I saw it because I my nickname for my son is literally bro. So I'm like, gosh, I'm failing at the title. This is already bad. <laughs> but uh, but I, I you yeah. know, it is it's tough. And and we are Bitcoiners are younger. They're they are starting to have kids now, right? And And uh, so I do think this is very important, but like, where's the line of like having a friendly relationship, right? With your kid at times and loving on them into where you think it's kind of like, hey, there's a line here that you got to still maintain that kind of authoritarian figure status. Yeah. Kingston, you want to take that one? Yeah, Kingston, where's it at? (sighs) I mean, (laughs) it's it's very, it's very hard to spot, (laughs) honestly. (laughs) And coming from a, coming from me, um, it honestly just all depends on the situation. Like, 
what what's going on what happened in the past couple of days what happened in the past week what like what's happening now like who are you with um and it's like if you're i don't know if you're out with the family getting ice cream like yeah hang out crack a couple of jokes you know it's not all like completely following the book there's a little bit of like <laughs> you know, hanging out and like actually enjoying time as a family. But, you know, when, you know, you do something or I mean, one of the biggest rules we have is like no phones at the table. And it's like when you're at family dinner and you're on your phone, like you're going to hear it across the table. (laughs) (laughs) So it it really depends on the situation. Yeah, I think I'd add to like Kingston and I, I would say are are friends. I don't know if like it's the right language. Like we we hang out like we're. we, we like to spend time together, right? But I think that has been earned and it's it comes from a place of like respect first. Um, and, you know, one of the things I talk about in the book is that the parent-child relationship is a unique relationship. It's not, what I'm not advocating for is sort of like this respect of overarching authority. And that's the, you know, a lot of Bitcoiners kind of thought I was going down that road of like, you need to teach your, your kids to respect authority. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that. I'm saying you need to kind of make a distinction that parental authority is unique. There's, you, there's only one, mm-hmm. one mom, one dad in a parent's life. And um, that relationship from, from the start, from when they're babies needs to be understood. Um, and really for the, for the child's sake, more than anything, like kids, I think need parents, <laughs> believe yeah. it or not. They need, nur- they need the nurturing of, of, of a mother and they need sort of the guidance of a father um, to kind of just bl- uh, like blank slate or, or blanket, um, like gender roles like that's that's really what it comes down Mm -hmm. to so um you're not your kid's friend first um but it doesn't mean like you're not in a relationship with them or you're not like friendly with them right Uh, it's just that there has to be a prior priority there yeah um kingston have you read the the book i've read most of it um i have not read all of it but i mean also i have lived it so i I don't i know most (laughs) of what's in there (laughs) <laughs> so. yeah yeah so so you can vouch that your dad is he his message in the book is what he's lived with you guys oh 100 percent. yeah he, he did not pay you to say this or to confirm <laughs> it right? uh no <laughs> no, yeah. no no, yeah, no I, anytime I, we talk anytime i hear anyone talking about it and like uh even when we were going over it like it's all it's good. Good stuff. Well, and I, I already said it, but I can attest that I met Kingston this summer at the Bitcoin conference and it's very brief, but just seeing you interact with people and running around and being involved, it's it's something that I think uh, it was impre- impressed me and my wife. So, uh, sh- you know, we're, we're Thank you. it's. It's nice to see because we hear so much about oh the younger generation or blah 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 blah. It's nice to see that there's still some some budding little rock stars in there. So keep it up and and you got a you got a good dad and mom that are setting a good foundation and setting you up for success in the future. So uh, good job. But um, thank you. Uh, along it. back to those lines. Yeah, no problem, dude. Of course, um, bro. No problem, bro. Um, Back, but back to the to the kids or to the Bitcoiners that are kind of coming of age. I've actually noticed on Twitter like some Bitcoin weddings, right? People getting married and and marrying yeah. other Bitcoiners, and they. I so I do think that this is a real thing, and I think there's a lot of people right now that um, I've heard people say it over the last few years that oh, I don't want to bring kids in this world right now, and yada yada, all that kind of stuff. Um, it it does kind of yeah. make me think about you know the importance of this kind of book. So have the sales been pretty good, yeah. and it, is it primarily being sold through Bitcoin Magazine or like where where are you guys distributing the book at? Yeah, Bitcoin Magazine um, sales have been solid. Uh, every time we have it at a conference, it, it, you know, sells out, which is great. Um, I think people are intrigued. You know, one, one of my one of my goals with this. So Bitcoin Magazine has a publishing arm. Um, that uh, published this book, um, and you know, I went through all the proper channels. I didn't get any, like any mm. special treatment <laughs> uh, or anything <laughs> like that. But it, you know, I, I wanted to publish it um, through Bitcoin Magazine because you know, there's there's a ton of Bitcoin content out there already that you know talks about Bitcoin. 
But I think it's important as we kind of mature as a community and, and you know, Bitcoin is now a teenager in, in its years um, that we start kind of thinking more th about sort of just the lifestyle components of other things that are relevant. Um, there's another great book, uh, Fiat Food came out recently. Um, had a chance to meet Matthew, the author. Um, great book, phenomenal uh, research and, and, and work that, that was put into it. But it's a book about, about kind of how fiat corrupted our food system. And so more books like that. So parenting, food, mm. like what else is sort of Bitcoin adjacent that's relevant for Bitcoiners, but isn't, you know, explicitly about just like Bitcoin, the protocol. Um, I think this is going to become more and more important as, as uh, we grow and mature as a, as a community. Yeah, I, I do too. And I think there's, um, you know, Jake and I were doing a show earlier today. Um, we, this is our third one today. So it's been a long oh. one, but um, save the best for last. So. But we were talking Amazing. just kind of about some of the, you know, I don't know, outside things that we want to start talking about more here, because I do think that we just have a really big community um, with a lot of a lot of the philosophy of life is what brought people to Bitcoin. And that's why I think we have such a like minded kind of uh, base. Um, and I think it's obviously growing because of the impact in like politics that I, I see the Bitcoin community having now you had Trump at the, yep. at the Bitcoin conference, uh, Kennedy at the Bitcoin conference. And, you know, there was rumors Kamala was going to show up, but, um, just having yeah. that kind of attention from, from presidential candidates shows how big the community is getting. So I do think it's very, very important that we have all these kind of tangential, uh, messaging, an educational kind of uh, platforms or or resources like what you did. So um, I think it's yeah. just going to no, continue absolutely. to be more and more important. Yep. And, and I, to go back to your point too, about just like people who say, you know, the world is hard and I don't want to bring kids into this world. I think as Bitcoiners, it's important for us to think about the type of world that we envision, right? Because the world is hard. And changing the world takes time, right? And and we talk a lot about low time preference and sort of the work that we want to, to do in the world to change the world. And I think having kids is probably the lowest time preference thing you can do, right? It's mm -hmm. a, it, on a long enough time horizon, if more of us have kids and we instill correct values in, in our children, then the world is going to change, you know, over, over a long time period. We're not going to get everything done in our lifetime, uh, but hopefully we can make good progress and hopefully, you know, Kingston's generation and Kingston's kids can, can begin to make, more of an impact, but like, mm -hmm. if we're not having kids, like what, what, what are we doing? Um, right. So that, that's, I think a really important thing to, to, to consider as a Bitcoiner who's, you know, hopefully not, hopefully doesn't have that mindset. Hopefully there's a more abundant mindset that says, I want to bring as many kids in the world as I can. Yeah. I mean, it's like idiocracy, you know, like yeah. if the other groups having it, like we need some yep. people with like-mindedness and, and uh, <laughs> some, some discipline having kids too. Otherwise we're going to end up on idi idiocracy. Jake, I'm sorry. I yep. keep talking. So you go ahead, dude. I, I tell you want to, you want to jump in. There, so my bad. I, I mean, the only thing that I'm kind of thinking of is um, it's, it's cool to see how you've kind of brought, you know, Kingston around this community and now I've kind of like integrated them into the community at that age. I kind of inadvertently, not really intentionally did that with both of my sons. Um, they're much younger. My oldest is six. And so he was there for the first Empower back in 2022. And so I literally, like, I brought him to Empower. We're, like, literally setting up stuff. He wanted to help. He randomly disappears. We find him with Ted Cruz taking pictures. He comes <laughs> up on stage. But then I would bring him to, like, whenever we're recording shows and we're doing them in person, he would come and I'd also bring him to the uh, the Bitcoin meetup because we would host it at our office in, in Houston. And... You know, I think a lot of people look at that as, you know, you got these kids that are running around and they're kind of annoying and stuff. But you know what happened the last like couple of times that I brought him? He, he didn't play anymore. He actually went and sat and listened and was like paying attention. And I knew that he actually listened because on the drive home, he regurgitated everything that he had heard. Wow. Right. Nice. So he got oh, his yeah. first iPad the other day and I was telling Justin, it was like the super <laughs> yeah. proud dad moment. And so I got it because <laughs> I'm splitting my time between Idaho and Houston and I wanted to be able to... To, to talk with him more. And one of his first texts that he sent me was Bitcoin is the best form of money. And he's wow. six years old. And I was like, 
that's something that's like so top of mind for him. He could send anything in the world when he has the ability to communicate with me. And one of the first yeah. three things that he texts me is Bitcoin's the best form of money. That's amazing. So, yeah. George, he missed the chapter that. about he missed the chapter about not giving his kids phones and technology. <laughs> hey, that's all I said. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. There is a I'm chapter about technology, but it's, it's very nuanced. That was the hard, that was the hardest chapter to write. I'll be honest. I bet. But, uh, I bet. I'm, you, you can't make anyone happy with that chapter. Um, uh, no, it's I know. Is, I think it's, it's the hardest thing to a win-win at some level. Yeah, it's, it's so be hard to navigate. Though. Yeah, it's yeah, very very clean or sorry, very like foggy line of like what to do with technology now because it's like mm. running away from it is just stupid because it's inevitable. Like it's taking over, but then like too much. You know of what it, I could... and it hurts. Go ahead, Kason. Yeah, my bad. No, I, I'm just saying, just finding that balance of you know what. Instead of you know turning it away, how how to integrate it in a healthy way instead of a junk way? That's a good point, and that, I correlate it to um, when I was coaching high school basketball in my prior Forrest Gump days. Um, I I we had AAU basketball was blowing up, right? And I'm coaching at a high school. Uh, a lot of the coaches wanted to just you know, get rid of it. And like, we're not going to associate with them. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. They start losing players to, to the AAU uh, system. We tried to say, all right, how can we kind of control this a little bit? And we bring it in, but we do it in a much more controlled manner. We want those guys coming around us so that we can kind of dictate how our guys that are playing for our high school team are going to interact. We try to bring AAU teams in that do it the right way and that we – so it, it, it's similar and just that there's kind of a balance and a dance you got to do with it that evolves, right, and changes, and you got to be able to change and evolve with it. But yep. I don't know. I've, I've tried to just maintain, like, open lines of communication with my kids on that kind of stuff because it's, you know, it's a dangerous, dangerous area, but then it's also one of the most empowering, informative areas that you could be in, and you don't want them to get left behind either. So. Um, totally. but yeah, Jake did send me that screenshot and his, his that was, that was his freaking <laughs> first, first Legit. text is Bitcoin related. That dude's on the, he's on the right path, bro. That's right, man. Good, good, good on you, Jake. We, we definitely need more <laughs> of that. More little, more little Bitcoiners running around. There's also, uh, <laughs> we also talk about, uh, just how we've, uh, incorporated like, like paying our kids in Bitcoin for, for various like household tasks and. Um, teaching uh, both our kids like stacking sats at an early age, getting them their first wallet. All that stuff's important. Like we got to practice what we preach and it, it, mm -hmm. it can be very like practical too. So Sarah got an idea from that too. She, she's going to have Jackson basically take an older miner and uh, fix it, fix a hash board, kind of learn to put it together. Um, yeah. And George and, and I work together too. So, uh, they've got a, a mining operation we're setting up down in South Texas ERCOT zone, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna set one of my son's miners over there and let him uh, watch his his wallet grow every day. Well, uh, it's a little guy; it won't eat up that much energy, George. It won't change the power bill too much. So, <laughs> no, so to be good. I love it. Yeah, so. and you're teach, teaching him a trade too, something he can do with his right. hands. Right. Right. And it's a way because he he loves computers too. Like he's all into it. It's a way to kind of take that interest and and kind of focus it on something that I think is is going to be valuable for him down the road. But yeah, but yeah. So yeah, um, yeah and I think so. I think Jake, Jake also hit on Jake also hit on an important point of just like having your kids around uh, in the environments that you want them to sort of um, soak in. Uh, meetups is a huge part. I mean, Kingston's been coming. I think ever since uh, Bitcoin 2021, which we attended, but I wasn't working at it yet, uh, there was like a, a curiosity about, you know, what is this whole, you know, Bitcoin thing all about? And started coming to meetups and, and you know, through that met, met a ton of people. Kingston's now working uh, for Strike, uh, met, met Jack at Bitcoin 2022 and kind of was like, you were like his like personal assistant <laughs> during, yeah. during that conference. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, impressed that team. And, you know, as soon as he turned 16, they, they brought him on. So 
um, look, this is like, it's, it's not rocket science. It, this is how, this is how they used to do it way back in, in the olden days where, where sons would follow their, their dads around, learn, learn whatever trade their dad's in. And, you know, um, it's not that much different. Obviously technology has kind of consumed a lot of our, our lives now, but, um, I think this is, this is kind of a big part of the, the, the message of the book is like your kids want more of you. They, they want to be around mm-hmm. you. They want to learn from you. And a lot of times, whether it's you're too busy or like whatever excuse there is, it's just not, it's just not good enough. Like you, you gotta, you gotta figure out how to, how to carve out that time and um, get, give them as much exposure as you can to the real world. I think so well, many I can people tell Jake has done a good about, job of bringing, Oh, my bad. This, oh, we got a yeah, delay. No, no, I'm you, sorry, I mean, man. It's, it's exactly that. It's not just the Bitcoin stuff, but like I bring my kids to uh, all the, like me working out. I bring them to jujitsu. I bring them to pickleball. Like they're exposed yep. to, I bring them to work with me. Like if I want them to emulate anything, I, I need to set the example in all aspects of my life and integrate them into it. And I think, and, and not to say that a lot of parents see their kids as burdens, but it's like, it's almost like dedicate, like, no, we're just going to have like playtime. Like that's the time. Like you're, you're not going to come into my life and I've never established those lines. My yeah. kids go a- absolutely everywhere with me. I actually went and picked up my youngest uh, a-, a few weeks ago and brought him back to, to Houston. He came to every single one of my me- meetings with me. He's like sitting at the bar at the Four Seasons drinking apple juice and like coloring. And he was like super <laughs> well behaved. And people were like, why is your son so well behaved in like these public settings? And I'm like, because he's accustomed to it. He's yeah, used right. to it. He's not like acting a fool. Like, and then my kids are social. Right. Especially yeah. bring them to the meetup. Now they they'll shake your hand. They'll look you in the eye. They'll they want to be accommodating. Hey, can I get you a drink? Hey, can I do something? And it's like I don't necessarily even teach them that they just they pick up on these cues by being around it so early and just integrating them into your life. So, yeah, well, well said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, well, that's literally what I was going to say is that I've seen Jake do a really good job of making sure his kids are around and involved and and uh just kind of watching and i do i think that's mm-hmm. where they learn a lot is just observation so um yeah mm-hmm. good job good job jake yeah jake, jake George approves. need to read the book he's already <laughs> no, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh so kingston what's your plans man what's your what's your goals after i mean strike might be it forever you're just gonna take over for jack when he's done <laughs> I mean, if you ask me that question, all, all, honestly, a year ago, I would have said uh, a pilot, and I, I still do want to be a pilot, but um, like going through like getting my private pilots. But yeah, if you would ask me a year ago, I would have said just full like commercial, like Delta Airlines, like mm-hmm. I want to fly planes. Um, but honestly, now I really don't know. I, I, I do still want to get my private license, um, but I don't know if I want to. I do want. I do want to like kind of continue an area in Bitcoin. Cause I love it. Like I love learning more. I've learned so much like, and um, like Jake, it's exactly what, what you were saying. It's all observation, like just kind of being around everyone and like picking, you know, hearing little things here and there and just understanding it and learning about it is like my favorite thing. So I, it's a hard question, but probably I do, I do want to stay in the Bitcoin space and, you know, learn as much as possible. Now, Kingston, you're done with school, right? You graduated already. Um, I have one more year, so I'm in my you junior year right now. Year. So I'm graduating okay. after this year. Okay, yeah. good deal, good deal. Um, and what are your plans? You are you looking at college, or are you just saying, hey, like I've already, I've learned what I need to learn in this system, and I'm moving on to, I'm taking the <laughs> Bitcoin path. Yeah, I'm homeschooled, so I actually tried to bargain to graduate this year because I really didn't want to do any school, and I kind of just want to work. Um, but <laughs> who, who's, who's there's a couple core subjects I still I still should learn. All right, uh, my mom. All right. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's all it's all it's all love. She, she, I need to know physics, I guess, to fly planes. So yeah, um, that's for the probably would no, help. It's um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I love it, well, man. I well, love the fact that you're not thinking about college. I've I yeah, I dropped out multiple times and, yeah, and ultimately weird. realized it wasn't for me. You know, and yeah. I, I say the same thing when when kind of preparing my kids 
you know, financially, you know, whether it be hodling Bitcoin for them. And I'm talking to my dad about it, who's very old world. And I'm like, college may not be a thing. Like by the time that they're even like college age, like the world could look so differently, especially with the rise mm -hmm. of like AI and just culturally, I think everybody's kind of waking up to, is it really worth starting your life off with half a million dollars in, in debt to then pay that off for the rest of your life? And really yeah. a, a job is never really any sort of like, there's no guaranteed security unless you truly are like owning the thing, right? So it's all this like yeah. gazy, this facade that has kind of been like sold to us. And so I think that it's really cool to hear somebody of like your generation who's just like, yeah, I'm not going to college. Like, I love that. Right. And it's <laughs> obviously like suiting you well, like you're making your own path. You're going out there and, and working with, with strike. And I think you have like an awesome future ahead of you. Yeah. I mean, my whole thing about college has been, if you want to, if you want to do, you want to be a lawyer or an astronaut or engineer, whatever you want to, whatever you have to do to be, go to college. Like, I'm not saying college is completely terrible and a waste of time. Like if you want to be a doctor, like, yeah, in this world right now, I actually agree with you. I do. I don't think college is going to be around forever, but yeah, right now, like you want to be a doctor, like, yeah, go to college. Like I encourage it. But for someone like me who just doesn't like school, and kind of just wants to work. I just, <laughs> just college is not a fun sounding idea. I mean, you and I both. Man, I hear you, dude. And I, and you know, it's similar to even the 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 fiat system. We we think that so many things are forever ideas or just laws, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is we're talking about things that are in this short span of time that we allow to dictate how we think things are going to be forever. And, you know, right. so uh, our monetary system has been really the way it is right now for about 50 years. That's it. So yeah. to think that this is going to be how it is forever is delusional. It's delusional. And to think that we have it totally. all right right now is delusional. It's the same way with college is like, the way that we've kind of been programmed to think and, and Kingston, this is coming from me. I'm a lawyer. I hated school and I went longer and I, it's like, so I'm, but I agree completely with what you guys are saying is it, it's just because things have been done a certain way for this short period of time that seems like forever to us and in, in our lifetime spans and our lifetime vision, it's, it's very, very, very insignificant. And it is going to, change it will inevitably it will change and it won't be this way forever so yeah yep. man kudos to you for not just falling into the mundane repetitive kind of lifestyle that we're all trained to to fall in and kudos to your dad and your mom for raising you to be aware of it um but yeah i mean i uh i i've been very impressed with you and i love your dad and and Russ, he's great too. So I, uh, Russ has refuses to come on a show, but we're gonna we're gonna keep pressuring him. Get him on here one day, Jake. You will. You'll get him. Yeah, Russ, we will. Russ, we'll, we'll get him. We'll work yeah. on him together. Yeah, I think also will. tangentially, so, I'm curious. Like, if we want to talk a little philosophy, Justin, if you've if you've paid ooh, yeah. attention, Jordan, I don't know if you have or not, but to some of the thought leaders, particularly on the AI side of like what the implications are for kind of broader society when a lot of potentially jobs could be eliminated through through AI, there's a significant amount of talk around like a universal basic income, right? And maybe this is mm -hmm. in conjunction with Bitcoin. Maybe it's not. I don't really know. I'm I, As of right now, I'm kind of of the opinion that, you know, back before the tractor was was built, you know, 90% of people were farmers and we lost a lot of those jobs and the world evolved and naturally adapted, right? And I, I kind of have feel like that we'll probably fall into kind of the same thing. However, what is coming is an absolute step change for society. And I don't even think any of us can really fathom really what is going to take place over the next few years, next couple decades. Um, I don't know. Have you thought, have you kind of noodled on this a little bit? Because it's also, I don't know, there's also a little bit spiritual component to it as well yeah yeah definitely i mean first thing with ai for me is like right now as i'm using like chat gpt and stuff i'm super polite like i i like use please and thank you because i, want I do to too. remember me when <laughs> yeah <laughs> when they come to, come to power um like yeah you were very you were very kind to us you're the nice guy um, 
You're yeah. you're not going to be a battery for us. <laughs> That's the first first tip. Um, but no, I tend to agree. I think I think the world's going to find a way way to adapt. Like we're already adapting. I mean, it's crazy to even think about what the world was like before ChatGPT. I mean, I, I use it pretty pretty regularly now, and um, it, it's a tremendous help in, in a lot of different areas. Um, as far as like UBI and stuff, that's, I think the big question mark is where, where does all this go? And, you know, I think there's some people that think that the bit, there's going to be a reality where Bitcoin and the dollar kind of coexist. Um, and there's some people that think that, the, you know, the dollar and is going to, is going to collapse and Bitcoin's going to take over and become the global reserve currency where AI plays into that. I think it remains to be seen. I don't know if you guys saw this story, I think just this week where uh, an AI created a, a launched its own coin did you guys see this i did not someone see created that. that's an, wild someone created an ai that went on to launch a token that ended up becoming like a 350 million dollar market cap all, all on its own and was interacting with other ais like this crazy story i think mark andrews wow. like funded it or something like that up so this is already happening and I, I definitely don't think we're ready for it um but I know I try to take the the kind of like abundant uh, outlook that says it's wherever it's headed, it's going to be it's going to be good. Um, I don't know if that's wishful thinking or or overly like Pollyanna, but like I'm personally I'm like not excited about like getting like a, a Neuralink chip in my brain or any, any of that <laughs> stuff. I think I think there's got to be like a line in the sand somewhere, and that's probably it. Like I, I'm not trying to <laughs> I like agree. become a robot myself. No brain um, implants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, whether or not we can kind of like control the, the, uh, evolvement of AI, or if it's going to be like a dark dystopian type thing where we're in the matrix, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think we just kind of got to try to plan for the best, but, um, it's happening, it's happening in our lifetime. It's, it's, it's definitely going to look different 20 years from now than it does today. Oh yeah. No, it, again, it's inevitable. I mean. People couldn't imagine where we're at 20 years ago. A lot of people, most people. And you take 50 years yeah. from, from then, it, you know, to think some of the things that people born in the, the 30s and 40s have witnessed just over their lifetime is dramatic. And I think we're going exponentially faster now than than what we probably ever have. So, yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Me and Jake tend to put on our tinfoil hats and we can go... Uh, very deep down some very very deep rabbit holes uh, but you know the Ooh. one thing that we know will be true is that there's going to be some changes and yep. ai is going to be involved and there's going to be it's going to play a major role yep. i had a question Jay? for you george did you see the hbo bitcoin documentary that just got released or no i did not see it yet i, I, saw, okay. I saw the spoiler though so i feel like you know, they're, they're saying Peter Todd Satoshi. Uh, they've gone. Yeah, it's it's yeah. They kind of back. Actually, I didn't even watch all the way to the end. I kept falling asleep, oh. but <laughs> I didn't think it was bad. Well, spoiler Justin alert. I, Sorry, dude, it's, Justin it and I. Twitter. I didn't yeah, ruin the movie it's, for that's more of a that's more of like I take melatonin at night and just fall asleep very, very quickly. <laughs> and that was like my nighttime watching. Not that it was like boring or anything, but there was like there's a lot yeah. of controversy about the, the whole premise of it and to kind of begin with. And I think a lot of. um Bitcoiners were like hypercritical of, uh, you know, I, my, my view is I think it, it, regardless of what they were ultimately trying to get out, it was just more kind of awareness for Bitcoin as a whole, which I think is yeah. typically going to be like a net positive, but yeah, we were, no, definitely. we recorded an episode earlier. We were talking about it a little bit. So I was just curious. Yeah. The, the whole question of who Satoshi is, is definitely fascinating. So I think, I think, um, the mystery of Satoshi is one of the things that I love the most about Bitcoin and, uh, you know, personally, of the opinion that the the longer it stays a secret, the better. Uh, but yeah, I agree. The speculation and sort of the attention is is uh, is definitely net net good for for Bitcoin. Yeah, I love when people ask. It's like, well, what about like who controls it? Like, then there's no one controlling my money. It's like, yeah, exactly. That's the whole like. <laughs> so point. There's no That's one you have good. to trust. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. this is a good thing, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a feature, not a bug. It's a it's a good thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I, I don't know, I, Jake, you, you need to. We got to get, we got to have George on again. Um, he's just a good dude, yeah. and you know, he. It, we haven't touched on mining, but he's he's an active miner. Um, you know, working on uh, getting a site up and running, which 
I'll call you afterwards, but we got got good news and some not great news, but just reality of what okay. what it okay. is. But um, but <laughs> uh, he he's got other operations going too that they've done, and he's just one of the kind of guys that you know I think it, people may not know his name as much as I think they should, but I think that uh, George, I think you're one of the kind of people that uh, just really make me happy to be a part of the kind of Bitcoin community. So I, I think Thanks, you man. do, uh, I, appreciate I think that. you do great job on everything you do. I've always enjoyed getting to talk to you and, and I love getting to work with you too. So, um, yeah, yeah likewise, man. Yeah. This is, this is a lot of fun. Appreciate you guys having me on and giving, giving us a chance to share a little bit about the book. Um, yeah, I hope, uh, hope we can get the word out a little bit more, all the parents out there that, uh, that want to read it I, and uh, you know, leave a review on Amazon, all that good stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Yeah. So where could, if they wanted to go purchase it right now, could we share, should we share a link? What, what should we do? What, where can they get it? Yeah. Bitcoin magazine. Yeah, actually this, this is important because it's actually kind of hard to find on Amazon, unfortunately, because there's a lot of merch. There's a lot of, I'm not your bra merch. So if you just type in, I'm not your bra, you get a bunch of merch. So you got to type in, I'm not your bra book. But yeah, we should put the link in uh, in the show notes or whatever. It's also on BitcoinMagazine.com slash store. It's actually cheaper on Bitcoin Magazine than Amazon, but there's no Prime on Bitcoin Magazine. So, you know, you got to uh, choose. True. I um, bought it from Bitcoin <laughs> Magazine, just FYI. Uh, love it. Love it. Support, um, support my community. <laughs> appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's on it's on uh, Kindle. Don't have the audiobook yet, but hopefully recording that soon. Kingston's going to help me with that. He's got that nice mic in the studio and everything. So. Nice. Um, yeah. Well, congrats awesome. on the book. I can't wait to do it again. Um, yeah. 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 Congrats on the book. Congrats on the new role. Kingston, congrats Thank on all you. your stuff. Keep it up, buddy. <laughs>